like, ah. Anyway, our guest is on the line. Let's welcome the man of the hour, the myth, the legend himself. Now, I I, got to ask, I know his first name is Rick, but (laughs) now you're going to get a kick out of this, Rick. Whenever I have a guest, to make sure I'm pronouncing the name right, I go on YouTube and I look out interviews to see how people are pronouncing it. And I only found one interview where the guy actually said your last name. Otherwise, you're just Rick from Adelita's Way. But yep, one guy that's, said, my, that's my new last name, Rick from Adelaide as well. I'm getting changed <laughs> permanently. Yeah, see, because the one guy, he's like, Rick to Jesus, or is it De Jesus? Was it and the guy who like, argued with me? He was like, I think it's De Jesus. And I'm like, no, it's the Jesus. <laughs> there was one guy who like, <laughs> tried telling me, like, no, nope, that's not your name. I'm going to change it. I was like, oh. All right, I'm going to go with your, you know, I'm going to call my ancestors up, my dad. I'm going to tell him, hey, this guy interviewed me, told me my name is not the Jesus. So I'm going with it. It's officially changed to to Jesus now. How about that? So it, How's everything it, it, going, man? Not... I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm in Las Vegas. It's beautiful. You know, we uh, we made a big announcement today for uh, for an upcoming tour, and, and things are going good. So what, what, we'll make the announcement. What is it? I think I know it. We go are ahead. we're going out in the summer with uh, it's going to be us and the band Red, and we're going to hit the okay. entire United States. And then in July we're going to go and uh, we're going to headline the states. So uh, we got a, we got a quite a bit of touring coming up uh, here. You know I've been in a pretty I've been so frustrated over the state of the business that I feel like every interview I've done lately has been dark and and. You know, uh, I've been brutally honest about everything, and and you know, I'm I'm starting to get out of that headspace because, you know, I don't I don't want to uh, you know I'm, I feel like I'm here to inform people. I'm not here to to put a darker cloud over what's going on in music. You know. <laughs> uh, all right, we're gonna have a good conversation then, because I I mean, that dark cloud infuriates me. Like, what happened to the freaking United States of America? Where are the rock and roll fans of this country? Hello, wake up, people. They're all, they're all gone, man. Day. You know, they're, they they've jumped on. You know, at the end of the day, there's always been there's always been pop fans and there's always been alternative fans, but now there's like no the 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 new generation coming up and even the one that that I grew up on. Everyone is listening to the same things, and it's the Mumford and Sons, the Imagine Dragons, Taylor Swift. I mean, I don't know a person. On, I ever because I, I ask a lot of questions. I talk to people. I bump into people, and and you know, rock and roll right now is just not. You know, no one, no one is out there. Uh, you know, and even the even the bands, the radio stations, the media, no one's fighting for it anyway. So it's like we're letting right. ourselves. You know, I was fighting for it. I was like Rambo out there. I was just taking bullets for everything I was saying. You know, and I found myself. I'm blacklisted from quite a bit of things because I've been trying to explain the state of music. You know, it, it's you know it's bad when. I posted something this week. The number one added song on active rock radio this week was Mumford and Sons. And that just tells you that even rock radio is abandoning the artist. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, the rock radio is the only place that, that we had left. It was the only place that people could still find out about rock bands. And now you can barely find out about rock bands. I wouldn't be surprised if you see less bands touring through markets because there's markets like Cincinnati, Minnesota, that they no longer have stations that are supporting you know, new rock bands or rock bands in general. You know, those those cities are trying to get, you know, people into the to the uh, you know Mumford and Sons as well now. So now Mumford and Sons have alternative radio, top forty radio, hot AC radio, and now active rock radio. And now active rock bands are on none of the formats. We're not even on our own format anymore. And I think it's a matter of time until you see a lot of bands making decisions on what makes sense for them. You know, if, if you are a Caesar. Right. Or you are Three Days Grace. Obviously, you 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 came out before 2006. You have that MTV right. audience, your household name. You know you you got to continue on. You got to continue to hold the rock and roll flag. I feel like any band that has come after 2006 that wasn't art. There are a couple bands out there that were already celebrities before the music. You know, the Pretty Reckless is a great band, but they, you know, they have a front woman who was on Gossip Girl. You know, that's that's ahead of the curve. Obviously, they're going to get played on. Uh, the rock radio stations because you know they're they are looking for someone they are looking for people who are already stars you know they're not trying to break their own right. stars at this point they're they're trying to cherry pick the stars from all over the place so you know you got you got a, a new band or two that's that's doing well um, but at the end of the day if you came after 2006 you're going to see a lot of those bands making the decision to 
to try to put out their last, you know, couple efforts to 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 get what they have to say out. And then I think you're going to see a lot of bands starting to make the decisions that that it's just it's becoming not worth it. Um, you know, to continue on. And and that's just the reality. I've already seen it from so many bands that I think are great. Framingham sure. just broke up. You know, we were out on the road with those guys. We saw that whole thing go down. Um, you know, and, and people, I hate to dig too deep into it because then people start saying, oh, he complains about it. But at the end of the day is we almost have nothing to lose at this point as, as artists. You know what I mean? Like right. my, uh, my buddy in the band Starset, uh, Dustin, who's a singer of Starset, I had a conversation with him because he never, he wasn't, getting royalty checks yet. And I was like, well, have you gotten a Spotify check? And he was like, no, you know, like what, you know, what is, what, what do they look like? And I was like, well, when you get one, just let me know. And I haven't seen him for a couple months. I just went on his Facebook and he was like, so I just got my Spotify check. And he's like, for a couple of million plays, they pretty much sent me back what it costs to have a subscription on Spotify. <laughs> like, what? So, if you get a couple million plays on Spotify and, and you're on you're on an indie label or a major or any label, you get about nine dollars, eight dollars for millions, I, millions of plays. I, I don't and even know what to say. And, yeah, people don't realize that because no one's buying records on iTunes. No one's going to Best Buy and buying records. Maybe maybe for a couple bands they are, but it, you know the numbers don't lie. You know, physical sales are, are like twenty percent of 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 what people are buying and then the other 70 is people are now streaming and streaming just doesn't pay artists so as right. an artist you have to be ready you have to be ready to put your music out for free and hope that people are coming to shows and people will buy t-shirts you know f for some bands that that's great you know i love the fact i do put my music on spotify because i want people to hear it you know I, i'm now not getting paid anything for it but that's fine i really never got paid because the labels were taken at all but for someone like me, and, and 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 you know, I have a family. I have kids. I have, I have, I have a life. I can't spend nine months out of the year on the road like I used to be able to. You know, I used to do that. I sure. used to, you know, from 2008 to 2013. You know, Adelita's way was out on the road nine, ten months out of the year. You know, now I, I, it, it, things have changed for me. You know, it's like that. That can't be the only source of income that I have from 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 music. Is you know, leaving my family going on the road. I'm willing to do it. But it's at a much, much less rate. It's going to be six weeks here, and then I'm going to go home for a couple months. You know, and it's going to be four weeks here, and then I'm going to go home for a couple months. You know, so the game has changed for me. But for you know, I ask a lot of questions. I talk to other bands. The game has changed dramatically for everyone. Uh, active rock radio isn't even supporting its active rock artists. It's at a point where it's very frustrating uh, if you're in a band that plays rock and roll today. Now. <clears throat> First, uh, going back to the whole Mumford and Son thing, why do you think it is? I mean, honestly, that. Oh, um, I know why it is because they're because here's the thing, they're you know the, the there's there's and I'm not going to name them, but there's one man who's programmed about 15 major stations, and his okay. theory is, um, you know, Active Rock Records were not selling as much as Imagine Dragons records and Mumford and Sons records, so he was like, I'm going to cherry pick the best from the alternative chart, I'm going to play them on active. I'm going to cut out the new bands. I'm only going to let a couple of currents come through, and I'm going to start playing, you know, uh, Seether mixed in with Papa Roach, mixed in with Imagine Dragons, mixed in with Milky Chance, mixed in with Alt-J, and he's calling it Rocktternative. So a lot of cities now don't even have a rock station where they can find out about At like Adelita's Way and and like a storm and star set and and in this moment and you know a lot a lot of the new bands are out there that are grinding on right. the road you know now now instead of you know active rock supporting you know and breaking 10 new bands you know they're letting two in they're letting two three yeah. in um that are getting through and and you know for me it, it's it's i enjoy playing music i love the fans i love to play that's what has driven me from day one is getting on the stage and playing I'm getting older in my career now, and, you know, I've, I've watched it change dramatically. And, you know, sometimes you get frustrated because you feel like you make a record that's just you're very proud of, you want it to be heard, and, right. and there's nowhere for you to get it out to hear it, for people to hear it. You know, it's like we're just, as artists, all we're looking for is a, is a voice for, for the records we make to be heard, you know. And every day I wake up, it seems, that window of, of finding a place for, for new fans and new people to hear about Adelita's way is getting smaller and smaller. So, 
you know, you almost find yourself catering to your diehards and catering to the people who stumble upon you. But at the end of the day, man, it's it's very sad to see what happened to rock and roll, even since I've been it there. Totally. I can imagine what it looks like. Now you know why Wes, Wes from Puddle of Mud's always having breakdowns. Dude, he saw it when it was like, you know, right. he saw it when rock stars were, were, were almost gods, you know? Right, right. That's a good now point. it's like, I mean, when was, you know, it's like, when was the last time you really saw someone freak out over seeing someone in a band? I mean, it's like they, they, you know, it happens sometimes. I'm not, I'm not going to downplay sure. the fact that sometimes I go out and people will be like, man, I love your music, you know, and, and uh, that always means a lot to me. You know what I mean? That that's, that's some of the moments that makes me sit back and, and, and reevaluate, you know, you know, why I do this or what, you know, what I'm doing this for. And, and, uh, you know, for the most part, man, I've seen the I've seen the rewards uh, diminish pretty heavily. And now, at the end of the day, if I have any advice for any bands that are coming up, like you got to not think that there's a music business out there. You have to strictly do it because you like to close your eyes, you like to sing, you like to play, and and uh, you know don't don't think it's going to be you know your your job. You know what I mean? Because even the best of the best right now, I see them and they're trying to figure out how to continue to have this be their job right yeah. you know go, going back to the spotify thing too how i mean we've seen the like the unfortunately the biggest name in the business taylor swift pull her music off of spotify why why not like all these artists band together and pull it off and take take it, it away it's from more them? it's more complicated than that because you, you got to remember man the record companies are never your friends they haven't ever been you know you read these stories about right. tlc getting bankrupt and Pretty much what happened is most of the record, you know, most of the record companies have you in four or five album deals, and uh, you know, for the bigger artists, they sell your rights off to Spotify before you even knew what Spotify was. Like, like Spotify uh, owned, yeah. Spotify owned the majority of these catalogs before the bands even knew Spotify existed. You know, like the labels signed away, took a three hundred million dollar paycheck from Spotify. That's why the rate is so low. That's why the artists don't get paid nothing because the labels got paid three hundred million up front didn't share any of it with the, with the artists. They just kept the whole stack of money. So Spotify is like, I, we paid for these. You know, we paid $300 million for these. And it's just unfortunate that the label didn't do the right thing and, and say, okay, we have 100 artists on the roster. Let's take $100 million for ourselves. Let's divide the rest $200 million up. Um, you know, obviously in order of how big the artists are, obviously Katy Perry's going to get $20 million, but Adelita's way wouldn't right. pay 100000 You know what I mean? Sure. We, we would sure. need 100,000 for our 30 million, you know, uh, listeners that that are going on there, but that didn't happen. Um, and then for bands, you know, we finally got out of our Virgin deal. But for bands like us, you know, everyone's on Spotify. That's where everyone's listening. So you have to make the decision at this point. They've already won. The labels already gave Katy Perry away on Spotify. They already gave Coldplay away on Spotify. They already did all this. You know, they, they blindsided the bands. They cold cocked us, put the biggest artists on there. So the audience went there. So now everyone's listening on Spotify, and if you choose to not put your music on Spotify, if you're not Taylor Swift, your record is not being heard, and that's a band's worst fear. My worst fear, every band's worst fear, is making something you're so proud of and no one hears it. That's why I'm so yeah. frustrated with Active Rock yeah. Radio and Late Night TV and any any like any like form of... I mean, when was the last time you saw a band get a really good placement? You were like, damn, that's cool, man. I can't believe that Blackstone Cherry is on this movie soundtrack. You know, you don't see it no more, right, man. Right. You know, the last band right. to do it was like Linkin Park, like five years ago. You know. Now, now, how about do you think that's a, a big reason why? And you guys have gone through this too over the last so many years, um, where there's always like a, a band member changes like crazy. Oh yeah, man. People don't realize. People people want to cry about band member changes. People want to be like, oh, that was you know, why well, I can't. But here's the thing. When when you're when you're trying to run a, a business and you're and and these guys come in and they want to be in buses and they want to be paid fifteen hundred dollars a week and they want per diems and they want new gear and they want all these things, when 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 no one's paying for music in the business and and no one wants to pay for anything, it's like how can you how can you give all these people the American dream of what they thought it was going to be like to be in a, in a in a rock band like I can't even you know I'm not going to give someone a million things that I can't even have myself you know what I mean I'm not going to give my guitar player a bunk in a bus that that I can't afford you know what I mean at the end of the day right. a bus a bus costs $40,000 for a 6 week run minus gas 
It's like, where's that money going to come from? It's not the old days where bands would sell a million records like it was nothing and there was $100 million floating around. You know, it's like right, nowadays right. bands sell 50,000 records and that money just is enough to get you whatever advertisement you can get yourself. I mean, it's the, the industry is at a pretty, a pretty leveled out place to a loss. You know, like you're either leveling out, losing money, or you're making just enough to where you're like, oh, I can pay – so a couple of my bills, you know, unless you're, I mean, there there are those circumstances. I don't want to speak for them. There are circumstances of bands. Hailstorm did a great thing, man. They made they they broke through on the countryside. You know, they got rock fans supporting them. But I think that Lizzie Hale is a one in a million talent. Like you know, like if yeah. if, if I think that they would have even more if we were in a different era. If we were in a different era, you know, that band would have sold two million records instead of two hundred thousand records. You know, I totally agree. Totally. So right. you, you, every now and then, yeah, you you know the stars slip through the crack. I mean, you know they 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 get by. You know, Lizzie was so great that country embraced her, rock embraced her, because her voice is so powerful. You know, I get compared to weird singers, man. You know what I mean? Like no one, when people talk about the way I sing, you know, it's 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 almost in that batch of singer of singers that people like to make fun of. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, he kind of sounds like. Chad Kroger, which I never thought was a bad thing. I'm like, oh, Chris Daughtry or, you know, mixed with Dave Grohl. And, like, Dave Grohl's the only cool guy left in rock and roll. Right. You know, everyone else, if you ask the general public, everyone else sucks minus Dave Grohl. <laughs> it's like Dave Grohl is the <laughs> coolest guy ever. Whatever <laughs> band comes behind him, let's make jokes about them. Yeah, it, it's uh, – dude, I feel your pain. Like, really, I mean, the – I'm just such a huge rock fan from being a little kid up to I'm going to be 45 this weekend. And I just love music so much. And when I see, like, what's going on in the music business today and the the rock world, I just shake my head. And, like, and people, I mean, people really need to realize, like, you know, what you're saying, like, you guys make your money now on the road, bottom line. So I, I know personally, I always make sure, like, when I go see a band, I'm buying merchandise. I'm buying CDs. I'm buying shirts because I know even if a shirt doesn't fit my fat ass, I'm going to buy one just because I know you to help. it's going to help you guys get to that next town, put a roof over your head for the night. You're, 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 do, your you're, doing, the, you're doing the right thing, man, and that, that means a lot to bands. But you also have to remember, you know how that makes – the, the bands, feel, you know, we used to at one point we were we were almost outlaws. Dude. We were godlike. We were, you know, what it feels like to feel like a charity case at this. You know what I'm right. saying? And and to yeah. go from to go from you know, I used to. I remember when I first started in 2006, anything was still possible then. Hinder broke through with Lips of an Angel. Shine Down had songs on top 40. You know, Break and Benjamin and Three Days Grace were both coming off double platinum records. Theory of a Deadman and a platinum record. So I was like bright eyed I had this you know I was like man anything is possible you know it you can go from rags to riches and I've just watched from 2006 to now I just watched it get worse and worse and when new bands come in and they ask me for advice I just tell them like guys you're in the darkest era of music and next year will be even darker and the year after that will be even darker you know like you're in the darkest era of music and just you know you should be proud of yourselves for sustaining you know you should be proud of yourselves for being able to go on the road because it, it's it's to the point now where yeah you know we're we're we've become you know like the homeless guy with a cup like oh, I'll give him a buck you know what I mean like right and, right and it, it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good to put your heart and soul on a disc and and you know have people you know not look at you like you're you're, you're like I want to go down to history man you know I want to I want to when I picture the things I've done you know with some of the songs I've created I want I want to have a place in music history but. Because sure. of the era I came in, I don't think that's going to be, you know, I think that my band will slip through the cracks. Maybe 20 years from now, people go back and listen to my catalog and pick songs. I was like, damn, this this is way better than those guys gave the credit for at that time, you know, because right now our kind of music is just not considered cool. You know, if, you, if the millennials, these kids, if I play my music for a 20-year-old kid, a lot of them will look at me like, what, there's too much guitars in this. I don't want to hear this. You know, I want, where's the banjo? Where's the... Where's the finger snaps? Where's the woe-woes? Where's the wee oo ahs You know, like, (laughs) and, and, you know, I'm just in the wrong era, man. You know, I should have been born in the 90s. You know what I mean? So, well, I should have been out in the 90s. I should have been born before that in the 70s and had a record out by the 90s, you know. Um, But it's just, it's unfortunate. And for me, I don't plan on hanging around 
long to become a laughing stock. I see some of those bands that hang around too long, and I feel bad for them sometimes. And you know, uh, you know, we're still at a point where we're coming off of we're just a couple years removed of our biggest album, and you know, we've had a couple big hits. And I'm not gonna let my band get slammed into the ground, man. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know uh, go out when I feel like it's time, and I'm and I'm going to uh, you know I'm gonna probably always continue to make music, but you know I'm 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 just for me, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, let everyone tell me how bad rock is and how, you know, how terrible everything is. You know, it's too stressful. What do, you, what do you think? Like, if you had to like make one thing to change the state of the rock music business today, what do you think one thing is would be like a big kick in the ass for it? Here's here's the thing. Everyone can say it's the records people make, but I've heard great records. Soundgarden made King Animal and it didn't do anything. Pearl Jam made uh, a great album and it, and it and it did you know for Pearl Jam it didn't do anything you know so it's just you know I feel like rock doesn't have um, an outlet these days. I think the number one thing because I'll tell you what happened. We were on one one time we were on ABC's The Bachelor Pad one night okay. a couple of years back. And when people got to hear our song, we that week we sold. It, we were selling about 2,000 singles a week of our song Alive. We were on TV one time for 20 seconds, and the next week we sold like 12,000 singles. So I think wow. it, it's just no one in rock is getting a chance. I guarantee people are going around saying rock is dead, rock is dead. I guarantee if Top 40 opened the gates up, or Alternative, or TV, or Jimmy Kimmel, or or a movie, or, you know, the new Transformers movie, if they woke up and said, you know what, man, we've already had Imagine Dragons on our Transformers, uh, you know, theme song for the last one, two, and three, you know, let's put, let's put Adelita's Way on, on the theme song, or let's put Shine Down, let's put Hailstorm, let's put Theory of a Dead Man, you would see the first rock band besides Foo Fighters to come out and sell a million singles or a couple hundred thousand records because they let us have an outlet for the first time. You know, the problem is, is we just get nothing. We get active rock radio won't play us. We haven't been on movie soundtracks. No one's getting syncs. So pretty much the only way to be heard is putting your music on Spotify and hoping people stumble across it. And, and, and that's not going to sell records and everyone still goes right. on sales. You know, when, when, but if they did an experiment and they took Hailstorm or they took theory of a dead man, or they took one of these bands Adelita's way. If they did an experiment, I would I guarantee that it would prove rock is not dead. If they took one band and they took one great song and Top 40 was like, okay, we're going to put one rock band on Top 40 radio and TV was like, we're going to put one band on Letterman and Kimmel and we're going to put one band on the sink of the biggest blockbuster movie. I guarantee you I, a million dollars, I guarantee you that that band, everyone would be like, damn, that band blew up this year. The fact of the matter is no one wants anything to do with those bands. No one wants anything to do with rock and roll. No one wants active rock doesn't even want to play active rock. So everyone ran from us, dude. Everyone abandoned us. We have no outlet. The fans are still there and they're great, you know. But I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna talk about the fans. I'm talking about the media. You know, the media has blacklisted right, rock. What right. was the last top? The last top forty song that crossed over was probably what 2000, 2011. Shine down. That was the last one. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of years, dude. That's four years of yeah, no. That's you're telling me in four years, not one rock band wrote a hit song. <laughs> and you know it's freaking amazing. Like, and I I do like a, a big year end countdown of like my top. Uh, usually it's been like a top ten, uh, you know, favorite rock songs of the year. Well, 2014, like, I thought that was the best year of music in such a long time. Like, I did a top twenty, and and all I kept saying when I was, I was doing is. I could do 30. Like, there was so much good music that came out last year. And, uh, yeah, like, where are the people? It's just amazing. Like, well, I don't – I'm just aggravated. I, I, I'm not even – it's not even my livelihood. And so I can't even imagine what you and everybody else who's actually in the business is, is going through. You know what? I've, I've already had my moment where I've vented. I've been pissed. All my interviews, I come off pissed. I'm, 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 I've come to terms with it, dude. I've come to terms with it. I know nothing's really going to change it. Um, I'm, it is how it is, and and at this point, I just have to focus on thinking of of how I want to how I want to close out the chapter of my career and my life. I, I got to think about 
you know, the, the, the next record I want to make or the next record or two I want to make to, to really go out and try to make a legacy for myself or try to make a record that, you know, and I try to do that every record I make, but, you know, at this point you, you, you have to make every record like it's your last. And it might not be. I might make two more records, three more records, four more. I don't know. But you have to have the mentality that every record is your last, so you put every ounce of you, – you, you leave it all out there, man, and, and you try to change it. You know, you, you try to change it by being so intimate, you're leaving everything out there. And that's the only thing that, that I feel like I can do at this point. The only thing I can do is leave everything on the stage when I perform – leave everything right. to, on my records, you know, when I, when I make a record and, you know, hopefully, uh, y- you know, I, I'm either around a long enough to where a whole new generation of people come in that are like, we love rock and roll. And it starts getting played on TV and on radio again. But right now this generation is like, we hate rock and roll. We don't even want it on <laughs> rock stations. You know, yeah, like man. there's programmers programming rock radio that are like, we hate rock radio. We hate rock music. You know, it's like, why are you here? You should go program yeah, a different like, station then. If you hate rock music, stop programming rock music. Go program alternative. Go program pop music. If you want to bring pop right. music to rock, you know, that's not what has to happen right now. We don't rock music doesn't need more alternative stations to take over I mean more alternative bands to take over the last window we have, you know. The if we want to see something change, the opposite has to happen. Rock bands have to be played on rock radio and then played on alternative radio and then played on it's getting worse the other way. That's why I don't see no, no light at the end of the tunnel. It's not getting better. It's not like, right. oh, that rock band slipped to the alternative side. It's like even we're trying to kill ourselves. Even the programmers at rock radio were like, let's not play rock music. So once once that happens, man, it's game over. It's it's already game over, man. It's already, you know, I, I see rock bands all day, dude. No one's happy with what's going on. That's that's so That's such a shame. It really is. Except the Foo Fighters. Uh, the Foo Fighters are the only ones. The Foo Fighters. The Foo Fighters are the ones that are like, yes. But you know what? Rock and I, roll. I, 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 I bet you. I bet you this time around, even they're not because I mean, they really on this last album they did. Look, look at all they did. They did a documentary for each song. They they did. They went and recorded each song in a different city. That cost them a lot of money, and they didn't like that opening week of sales. I, it didn't hit what they were expecting, and no, I don't didn't. Think but Dave they... Grohl, Dave Grohl doesn't have the mentality. I mean, he was in Nirvana, he was in the Foo Fighters. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't have that element of feeling like a lost soul. Like when you have, when you have bands that that have been around for ten years right now, um, you know, Nonpoint, Saliva, Hinder, uh, Framing Hanley, you know, Three Days Grace. When you have these bands, you know, when you start to see the window close, you know, even Adelaide as well. You know, we don't like. Like, I've done music for the past 10 years, and, and right now you, I find myself looking at the state of the business and questioning, you know, like, when is it time to turn this into a hobby of mine? You know what I mean? Like, when is it time right. to turn it from a career into a hobby? And, you know, Dave Grohl doesn't have to deal with those demons. You know, he's, he's, he's right. got enough money where he can be like, damn, it sucks what's happening in the rock and roll. Just like Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons can sit at the top and be like, rock is finally dead. I'll see you guys. I'm going to go get in my Bentley and drive down. You know, he's not going through the <laughs> daily struggle of understanding what it's like to, you know, West Scantlin, you know, goes nuts every day because that dude bought mansions. And now he's like, you know, what happens to all the money? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what? I can't right, pay right. for anything anymore. You know, so, you you know, some bands are having, you know, they're they're having breakdowns, man. They're, we're, we're, you know, it, it's getting to the point where, it's 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 getting so ridiculous that that everyone is you know we're the we're the, we're beyond the black sheep dude we're like you know we're like the the kids that parents are like well, I wish I never had you <laughs> it's like whoa <laughs> you know and 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 you don't want to have to put up with that you know as as a band you you know at that point what's 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 the reason to stay out and, and take that beating and take that abuse you know for me I've been di- I got disrespected enough this year just overall by by some of the tours I've been on, you know, the the you know, the some of the paychecks I've gotten, some of the things that in this industry that I'm kind of like, you know what, man? I had a great run, you know? Dude, you're bumming me out now. Come on. <laughs> no, I don't want to bum you. I don't want to bum you out. You know because, you know, there is a whole other side of it, man. There there are bands who still are doing it just cuz they love it and just cuz they're like, I just sure. love music so much. It's in my soul. I don't care if no one buys it or no one listens to it. If I'm the only one that listens to the CD every day, I'll be happy. And that was me, man. I remember being that way, 
you know, in 2004, 2005, when I made my first three-song demo, dude, no one knew, no one heard it. I would drive around in my car and listen to those three songs. But it's like the minute you get a taste of, of what was out there and that it all gets taken away from you, it's tough It's tough to go back yeah. to your original state of mind. You know, you know. Absolutely. For me, when I'm out on the road, yeah, it's great. I'm, I feel blessed that I'm out on the road. I feel awesome that I get to get into a van and, and, and hang out with my guys in my, in my band. But I've been doing that for 10 years. And, you know, when I when I think about some of the things that, that, that we have to, you know, deal with and go through and how hard we work and how how much uh, adversity we face, it, it, gets to a, it gets to a point sometimes where you're like, you know, you start thinking about um, life after music. Right. What, what does life after music look like for you? You know, I think uh, you know, one of the best and worst things that ever happened to me was you know, having and my children because, you know, I love them. I love them so much that life after music is amazing no matter what I choose to do. You, you know what I mean? Right. Because, it's, you know, when, when you have no kids and you have no life after music looks like the darkest, saddest cloud you've ever seen. You're like, oh, my God. But when I look at life after music, I look at my children. And I'm like, I'm going to get to spend time with these guys. You know, I don't got to I don't got to worry about you know, breaking my daughter's heart every time I go away for eight weeks, you know what I mean? And and my wife's been dealing with this for 10 years already, and she's, you know, she's ready for me to, you know, back in the day, she used to send me right off. She'd be like, oh, you're going on a tour? You guys are going to you guys are gonna do well on this tour. You're going to make some money to bring home for the bills. You know, when, when and, you know, fast forward to 2015, 2016, she's looking at me like, you're going out for eight weeks, and how much are you bringing home? You can't go on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... You need to be here with the kids. What do you mean? You know, like so. <laughs> people don't people don't realize that they think we're all millionaires. They think that you know even even the biggest bands right now are, are you know if if they started after 2006 they're not millionaires. You know, they're not even hundred thousanders. And I think life after music for me, you know, is is really enjoying my family and being a hardworking man. I've always been a hardworking man. You know, and I always think I'm going to make music. Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying I'm going to quit music and stop music. I'm just saying it's going to be in a different form. It's going to be in in, in a form of how I did. You know, I am going to eventually go back to the beginning because I'm going to be doing it as a hobby, and I'm going to be doing it. When I first wrote my first three-song demo, I didn't know what was out here in the music business. I wrote those right. songs because I had them inside of me. I wanted to do it because I... I I wanted to get into a studio. I wanted to hear my voice on track. I wanted to create music. And I think that'll always be inside of me. I think that I'll always be making music. I'll always be making records. I'll always be throwing songs up on Spotify. I'll always be throwing, you know, it, wh whether it's Adelita's way, whether it's my own stuff, just throwing music up on, you know, and, and being proud of it. I think that's always going to be there. So that's going to be life after music. But the reality is, man, you know, you, you, most bands are going if to, it, if it gets any worse than it is right now, Everyone's gonna have to get jobs. Right. Everyone. That's scary. That's so freaking scary. It really is. Yeah. And, and then, you know what like, it's like to have to tour for six weeks and then run home and paint houses. I know. I know guys and bands who have toured with my band, and I think are fan. Have you ever heard of the band New Medicine? Yes. We had the Jake on uh, last year. I love New Medicine. And Jake yeah. was out on tour with me. He was going home and then he was painting houses. And I'm like, "What are you doing, painting houses?" He's like, "Dude, it's what we got to do." And I'm like, I was devastated because I think he is an artist, man. I think he is a great artist. I think you put you go back, you know, ten years, you know, and Jake's making noise in the music business, you know. Right. Wow. So it hurts. That's it so hurts. Freaking scary. Oh, it and, is, and, dude. It is. But I think I've seen it happening long enough to where I've prepared pretty well. Um, you know, I saw the decline of music coming. You know, after in 2012, I saw things. I was kind of like, yo, it's. What's this Spotify thing? Right when I saw that, I knew. I was like, this is bad. This ain't good. Man, yeah. we got to start saving money. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, <laughs> 2000, I've been saving money since 2012 because I saw it, man. I was like, this is, this thing is free, and your music just goes on, and it's free, and people got to pay for it. And then if they do have to pay for it, it's like 9 bucks for a year, for a month or whatever. I'm like, yeah, this thing is going to kill everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I'll tell you what, you a, lot of, that. a lot of That's like having a supermodel girlfriend that loves football and lets you do whatever you want. <laughs> For nine bucks That's a month. That's <laughs> Spotify. That's why I don't even try to fight it. I don't even try to badmouth it because it already won, dude. You are, We already married it. We married it. There's 20 million listeners on there. You know, we it's it's done. Wow. 
It's a done deal. There's no, like, revolution to fight Spotify. It is here. There might be a revolution in 10 years after a million bands start quitting. Artists start they keep really publicly speaking out. You know, Jay-Z and Taylor Swift, and everyone's like, blah, blah, blah. You know, we're not making records no more. If that happens in 10 years, they might be like, we're going to raise the rate, we swear. You know what I mean? And then and then right. I'll be looking for reparations. I'll be like, I was I was a part of that slave movement. Throw me some. I want some. <laughs> I want you know. I got ten million Spotify you know Spotify plays. Ten million people listen to my song, and I got a twenty dollar check. You know. That's that just <laughs> that just fucking blows me away. It really does. I would lose my mind. So you have every yeah. Right it to all sucks, dude. Pay. YouTube, Spotify, all that stuff, dude. YouTube's even worse, man. I think our video on YouTube had like two million views, and we got like five bucks for it. Oh, you know? Man. Yeah, you got it. You got. It. And people say, well, some people make money. Yeah, you have to be like Gangnam Style, where you have like a hundred and eighty million views, and then dude will get a check for like twelve grand. He's like, I got twelve grand. You know, like if you if you're on Spotify and you are Madonna. You are, you are Imagine Dragons. You are, you know, Lana Del Rey, and your song has like 85 million hits on one song. But you know, Happy by Pharrell. You know, Pharrell was even in the news crying the other day. Happy had like 140 million streams, and he was like, "I got like a two thousand dollar check." <laughs> it's like, oh. you know what I mean? Oh. So when he's complaining, when he's complaining, imagine how I'm down here feeling. I'm like, well, I'd rather have right. like two grand than the five bucks they sent me. You know, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, everything's lighthearted for me, man. You know, I, I, I had interviews where I tried to make a stand. I tried to make a difference. I came off as a complainer to people because they didn't understand, you know, what I was trying to tell them. You know, but I was trying to give them a, a fair warning. Like, do you like having your favorite bands around? If you do, listen to this interview of me complaining because they're all going to quit if you guys don't fix it. And I did interviews like that, and people started bashing me like, this guy is so negative. And it's like, I'm not going to be like that no more, man. I'm going to go out on my own merit. I'm going to make records. I'm going to be happy making records. I'm going to enjoy the process. And I'm always going to enjoy the process. You know, for me, yeah, but did you, I've become zenful with, with what's coming. Yeah, but dude, you know what? You, you're having the balls to stand up not only for yourself and your band and your music, but for the whole genre. And, and I think a lot dude, more I, and guys... I speak for the genre. That's the thing. I never speak just for myself because I'm not worried about right. just myself. I've accomplished a lot, man, and, and I'm proud of everything I've accomplished. You know, I've had number one hits. I've headlined tours. I've sold out shows. I've done so many things that I look back and I'm like, man, you know, I'm, I've played in front of 75,000 people numerous times, you know, like... Uh, it, 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 it's, it feels great. I'm not looking for a pity party. I'm trying to cause a pity party for the artists that are coming up next or the ones that I think were great that never got a shot. Or, You know what I mean? Like it's, I don't just speak for myself. So, yeah, some, we lose fans sometimes because I go on interviews and I talk about it and people are like, you're really negative. And I'm like, dude, well, welcome to the real world of what we deal with every day. Like you don't like hearing <laughs> – they don't like hearing the truth. They get offended right. that I'm telling the truth. They get mad at the truth. And the truth is this, everyone's happy breaking Benjamin's back, everyone's happy the Three Days Grace is here, everyone's happy all these bands are, are, are back. If, if things continue to get worse, it'll be a short-lived return. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be, you know, whoa, I didn't know it was this bad out here. <laughs> like, I'm going <laughs> to... And, and those bands, you know, breaking Benjamin, is, it, people are so excited they're back, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna sell out, you know, amphitheaters, and I'm very proud of that band, by the way, because A, I love Breaking Benjamin, and B, my former guitar player is in the band, so I support them. Nice. But I'm just talking about the state of the business. You know what I mean? You yeah. Know, when when yeah. a band used to sell two, three million albums, and then they put a record out and they sell 80,000 records, they're like, you know, they think it's their fault, or they're like, what happened? They don't understand yeah. it. It's just the times have changed. You know, everything has changed so much that 80,000 records is the new million. You know? Yeah, it is. A hundred thousand right. albums is like having a platinum album today, man. You know? It's crazy. It really yeah, is. Yeah, it's 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 tough, but you know, like I said, I've I've come to terms with, with the direction that it's heading. There are a couple new bands that are breaking that, that you know, it you almost gotta be a part of the Illuminati, dude, if you if you know, for every <laughs> twenty bands that are like Adelita's way, there's one new one like Royal Blood breaking through. You know, there's one, you right. know, who who the United States is not the ones breaking these bands. The Royal Blood broke out of the UK first. The UK decided we're gonna we're gonna support this band. This band needs to be something. You know what I mean? And and there's there's a couple of bands like that that are that are getting through. You know, the Pretty Reckless. There's Hailstorm. There's Royal Blood. I can name three to five of them, and then the buck it buck stops there. Then there's after right. that it's all 
you know, it's all Seether and Papa Bands have been around since 1995. You know what I mean? And then and then there's a whole plethora of artists that you know in in the in the, in the middle to upper middle there that just you know they they get no they get no shot. He, he, one band you keep mentioning a lot, uh, pretty reckless. Did, did I see somewhere like that they gave you a rough time on tour or didn't treat you guys right or something? It was the worst tour we ever did. But you know what, man? I try to look at two sides of it. You know, I, I don't feel like we, we meshed well with them. I don't feel like we got along with them. I don't feel like the tour did anything great for our career. But at the end of the day, man, I, you know, they, they decided to bring us out, which was cool. You know, we, we held our value. You know, they didn't pay us anything, and we brought a couple hundred people a night. You know, they obviously outdraw us, man. I'm not going to lie and say, right. and say, that band's not doing a fantastic job because they are. They're doing a fantastic sure. job. I think Taylor Momsen's a star. I think she was a star before she got into rock and roll, and I think she continued her stardom with rock and roll. I think her fans came over from TV, and I think she did a good job making good music to keep them there. Um, you know, the, the problem that I have with the Pretty Reckless is they didn't want to give us any credit. You know, we weren't trying to say, like, oh, we're outdrawing you every night. You know, there were 700 people a night at the shows. We were drawing 200 of them, 250. You know what I mean? We were getting paid like we were drawing zero. So... For, and, and treated that way, you know what I mean? So for me, it was a little frustrating, and it, was, it also has to do with where I was in my career. You know, I've accomplished so much in my career that I was kind of looking at where we were, and, and we were opening up for this band, and I was just like, man, you know, it, it might be time for me to, to call it a day. And I took some of my frustration out from that whole process on how I was treated on that tour, how that went with them. You know, they are who they are. They are, man. I don't, I don't want to take this. I don't want to stay in a feud with that band. I, you know, it doesn't do anything for anyone. I'm grateful they brought us out. It didn't work out. I don't see us doing anything in the future with them. I wish them the best, though, man. You know what I mean? I'm, sure. I'm not going to – we just didn't – we didn't mesh. Our personalities didn't get along. Um, I didn't like some of the things that they said to me in person. You know, at the time, I kind of, like, looked at them. And I held everything in, man. I got kids. I got a wife. You know, I can't be out there uh, getting in fist fights and stuff anymore. I used to when I was younger. You know, I don't want, I don't want to be – that guy, I already have a bad reputation in this business because I speak my mind so much. I already get yelled at by my managers and by the label for talking about, you know, the state of things are for artists. So I don't need to be in fights with other artists. You know, I need to be yeah. on the team with other artists. So I bashed them in a couple of interviews. Um, you know, they're upset with me. But I told the truth. I told the truth about what happened. And, you know, that's, that's a bummer that they don't, you know, I, I'm hoping, what I was hoping to get out of it was, you know, when they tour with other bands, hopefully they'll show a little more respect to the bands that are going out in the road with them, because everyone has their time. We were on the top, man. They're on the top right now. Everyone has a time where they come down, man, and when you come down, you want people to be like, you know what, man, that band was always respectful. They were always cool. You know what I mean? And and they're young, some of them, and I hope that they learn right. from that instead of instead of you know telling me to 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 screw off. You know what I'm saying? You know, learn right, right, and 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 try to. You know, take some not advice because if there's no advice, you know, I I, I probably handled it uh, a little more harshly than I should have. But take what I'm saying and say, yeah, that guy's a, a, a jerk. They can call me a jerk, but maybe we should do things a little you know better because we're at the top right now. And when you're at the top, that's the time to show everyone, you know, that you're that you're you're good people. And you're you know, when you're at the top, you're supposed to treat people with respect. And I'm not going to stay into a few with that band. You know, I've said what I have to say. They're not happy about it. Obviously, I wasn't happy with a lot of things they said to me and and and, and uh, how things went down. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to make them the the, the the being of my existence. You know what I mean? Like it happened, right. it's over with. You know, if I if I, I probably would never have to share words with them again unless they want to come confront me, which I don't think would be a good idea. Um, and that's where I am with it. Gotcha. Well, I mean, let's talk positive stuff. Like you got, you said you guys announced today headlining tour. And this is something I know you've been really looking forward to doing is actually doing a headlining tour. Of course. You know, I think, like I said, adding, adding to whatever legacy that I can, I can leave this game with, you know, it's very important for me to, uh, to successfully continue to headline the United States. We've done it before in the past, and I want it to, I want it to be bigger, better, and better than ever. I want people to know also that you got to come see us, man. Who, you, you, don't know, you don't know how long – that opportunity is going to be there. And I don't mean to say that because I don't think my time at the end of this is soon, but I don't want people to take for granted the performance that we put on. We put on a spectacular performance. I think we're one of the best in the game at the live show. And, uh, you know, I think a headlining, a headlining tour to me is, is very, very, when I think about 
going down in history for myself and, and people coming out to a show. I think ours is going to be one of the best ones that they're going to see of this time. And headlining is a big deal to me, man, because I want people to have memories. Sure. I saw Adelita's Way headline in 2015, 2016, and it was amazing. You know, that was one of the better times of rock and roll. That's what I want people to say. And, uh, you know, I, it's going to be the biggest, baddest thing we've ever done, man. The show's going to be better. Uh, we're going to make sure we're playing the songs that people want to hear. And we're going we're gonna to be playing new music, old music, everything. And it's going to be something special because, like I said, I want to put everything out on the table, man. You know, I don't know how many years. I, it could be two years. It could be four years. It could be five years. I don't know how much time I've left uh, inside of me because I bleed on stage, man. I put everything into everything that I do from the performances to the records. And, uh, you know... It, so at some point, dude, you leave all your emotion out on the table, you know, it, 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 it's out of you, you know? Right, right. Now, are you guys going to be coming, do you know if you're going to be hitting the Philadelphia area? Oh, of course, man. That's our hometown. You know, I'm definitely going to come to a huge show, and I'm hoping the TLA jumps on board because I think we're going to sell it out, man. You know, I think we sell out Philadelphia, and I think there's a lot of places in the country we'd sell out because if, if, with all this negative talk going on, I will say this. One of the things that I look back on and everything, we have amazing fans. And that's why sometimes I don't, I don't speak from terms of just Adelita's way. When I speak, I'm speaking for every band, man. When it comes down to our fans individually, I love them. We have the best fans that there is. I appreciate everything and every fan that comes out. I mean, we're, we are one of the few bands. I mean, there's an upper tier band, like, like I said, like Theory of a Dead Man, Hailstorm. And they're putting 1,200 people in rooms, 1,000 people in rooms. Then there's then there's the tear falls off, man. There's only a few bands that can do what we do. You know, I'm I know this because I look at bands that I try to get to open up for us and no one brings more than fifty people. No one you know, I look at bands, I'm like, they can't bring fifty people. They can't bring a hundred people. We're still one of those bands that brings three hundred to five hundred people everywhere, man. Two hundred and fifty on a slow night. And and that to me that's an amazing accomplishment for my career, man. That's it's not a thousand people. We're not, you know, up on the upper echelon with Hailstorm and and you know, the Ben Sevenfold even beyond that. But you know, we're still one of the few bands that can go into clubs and fill rooms up and have a magical night with fans. And for me, man, that's that's you know, I don't ever want to get too greedy emotionally, you know, because emotionally, even though you don't walk out of the building the richest man alive, to to look and see that happening in every city, it feels amazing, dude. It feels amazing, sure. and that's why I think headlining is such a big, important moment for us right now in our career. You know, I think I'm searching for something to define myself uh, right now, and I think it's going to be through the next record or two that I make and, and, and the next couple tours that we do. Awesome. And uh, you guys also have an EP you guys put out recently. Why, uh, why a change-up from full length to go an EP route? You know, we were so disappointed that the record company, you know, the record company wanted us to make an Imagine Dragons record. Dude, the whole industry was shifting towards, uh, let's sound like this, let's do things this way. And they, they, they literally held our album over our heads for, you know, for about a year or two. And we were so frustrated because we just wanted the people to hear our work that the minute we became free and available, we were like, let's write some more songs, let's release some material to... to to the fans because we had to wait so long to release, you know, from Homeschool by Victorian 2011 to Stuck came out in 2014. That was three years that we didn't want to wait, man. We wanted to put another record out in a year, a year and a half, and we had to wait three years. So I think we wow. were we we were excited to to be able to put music out whenever we wanted. So we put the EP out. You know, we did a pledge. We raised a ton of money. The fans were amazing to us. Uh, we're currently working on the fourth album right now. I feel very, very, very excited about. Uh, the direction that we're going with the fourth record, and uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm looking, I'm looking to do something uh, amazing uh, with, with the time that I have left in this game. Yeah, speaking of the pledge, you guys did the pledge music uh, campaign. Now, was that for the EP or for the new full length you guys are doing? That's for the full record. We gave the EP to everyone that pledged, just because you know it, it was. We were so happy, and we, we wanted people to hear it. Uh, but the pledge was for the full length album. Um, you know, we got a couple songs written for it. I'm hoping we can get in the studio by August. But like I said, I'm 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 taking my time with this because I really feel like this is a, a, a defining moment for myself and for my career, um, for the, for the opinion and view that people have on us right now. You know, I think I have to make something that that Adelita's Way fans are blown away by first and foremost. And then, if you're not a fan of Adelita's Way, you you even look into what we did and, and you're saying, man, this was the best record the band put out. And that's what we're striving for. You know. When, when you ask people right now, everyone, that get, you know, critically, you know, homeschool valedictorian is the one that gets the most critical acclaim from our fans and from everyone. And, and you know, I, I feel like 
I can do something. I love home and school, and it was a great moment of, of my life, but I feel like I can top the record, and, and that's the challenge. The challenge is to top the best record that people believe we've made, and uh, that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. And, dude, I'll tell you what, too. Like, I'm looking over um, uh, the list of, like, things you guys had on the Pledge Music thing. It's, it's not just like, uh, you know, you get the album or, you know, stuff like that. But, I mean, you guys had some cool, like, perks here. I mean, uh Stage well, I think you have to. Clothes. I think you have to. I think you have to show yeah. the fans that 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 you're fun and, and that we care and that we appreciate them. And I think, you know, uh, you, you don't want to just in the music business, everything becomes so predictable and everything blends in. And you know, I can almost predict where we're going to chart on the radio now, and I can almost predict how many we're going to sell each week, and I, I can predict everything. And you know, with the pledge, we were like, you know, let's let's do some things that that people are going to really think are cool. You know, let's not just follow the same platform that the last 10 bands that pledged before us did you know let's let's try to do something interesting let's try to do something uh you know fun for them and, and we we thought of some cool fun things you know, like go-kart riding a night out in vegas um you know we thought of uh uh you know handwritten lyric sheets by me and we, you know we just thought of some cool things you know right. my boots from the dog on a leash video um you know we we thought of some cool memorabilia man i feel like if this was 1995 dude those boots from a dog and leash video would have been in the hard rock in vegas you know and uh right, instead right. they're going to be in they're going to be in someone's uh man cave or woman cave you know that's cool that is very cool a skype acoustic performance an actual house concert you know what, man? I was a little weary on the house concert. I the, the band wanted to do that one, and I was kind of like, man, you know, I because for me, we get a lot of offers to play weddings and house shows. People are like, you know, we'll pay you, and and I just I think so highly of 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 our performance and everything that I that I get a little crazy about that kind of stuff because I I do believe, you know, we're just a product of the times being tough, man. I do think that, you know, we would have an aura about us if if we were just you know five years to the left, man. You know. Right, right. Wow. Rick, I, you said a lot. And <laughs> everything you said is the truth, though. I mean, I, yeah. I, everything you said, I back you. I, I mean, I can't, like, disagree with anything you said. You know, I, I always got to, with, with everything, I speak the truth, I speak my mind, but I do want everyone to know I appreciate everything that, that I've been able to do with my career. I appreciate every fan that's bought an Adelita's Way t-shirt, a record, uh, anyone that's listened to us. I appreciate all you guys. You know, when I when I speak, you know, I, I'm speaking for the artist that hasn't had a shot yet. You know, I'm speaking for the kid who's in his room right now trying to learn some riffs, you know, some Zeppelin riffs or some riffs because he is a dream. You know, his dream's going to be really tough. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lot sure, tougher sure. than it was a couple years ago, you know, so... Those are the people that I'm speaking for, man. I've had I've had a great run. I've had so much fun doing what I'm doing, um, you know. But you know, th like I said, the, the times aren't improving, dude. They're getting worse, and uh, I'm just trying to reiterate that to people that, you know, if you want to see a code red, dude, it's now for rock and roll. The code red is going on, and and rock ain't dead, man. It's underground. I always say that it's underground, and and it's got to be a movement to where. You know, one day people are going to have to not find their new bands on the radio or not find their new bands on anywhere. You know, they got they got to search for them. Wow. Yeah. You got to listen, I, man. I, no one wants to take I, I, people I know, are impatient I, now. They got their iPhones. They're doing a million other things. No one takes the time to go and find a band and listen to something they've never heard before. They have to hear of it to know it. You know, like. Like they, right. their friend has to say, have you heard Imagine Dragons? Or this movie trailer is telling me to listen to Imagine Dragons. Or this top 40 station is playing the same song every two songs. So now I know I love this band. No one has taken the time to go and 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 take an hour of their night and search for bands they've never heard of and listen to the records and listen to the catalogs and listen. No one does that nowadays, man. This no. new era of, of, you know, when Apple came out with the iPhones and the Internet became more prominent, it changed us all as humans. It changed us as a, a race. You know, our relationships struggle more. Uh, music is, 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 you know, has no special value to people like it once did. You know, ever, like the, the iPhones took our attention spans and they've completely, um, you know, they, they've given us too much. They've given us a, a beam of life, dude. Like, you know, like you're never bored. You know, when you were bored back in the day, man, you'd go and be like, you know what, I'm going to buy this new, I'm going to buy this Deep Purple record and, and listen to it because I don't know what it sounds like or, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. I have no idea. I'm just going to put it on and listen to it. No one does that. No one just goes, I somebody mentioned this band Adelita's way. I'm going to go sit in my room 
and listen to their three albums to decide if I like them or not. You know, like at best they'll listen to one song, and maybe at best they won't even listen to you. Maybe they'll just like I'm going to stick with the Mumford and Sons. People, <laughs> I've heard, you know, this is what they're telling me to listen to. I'm going to listen to it. Dude, that statement is so wrong. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, let's uh, let, let's get all the plugs out there, Rick. Let's uh, let's let the world know where they can actually get your music. And uh, f Spotify. Don't go there. I don't go there. Screw them. No, the best place for us right now is is go to iTunes, man. We own all our stuff. You know, if, if somebody buys our EP from iTunes, if somebody gets the new EP we put on iTunes, that really supports the band. Uh, you know, grab a T-shirt, man. We got Adelita's Way Online Shop dot com is where our merch is. Um, you know, iTunes is where our new EP is, uh, and you know we're put, we're putting a fourth record out. Look out, you know, look out for us on the road. We're going to be out with uh, with Red uh, in May, June, and then July, August. We're going to be headlining the states, and then uh, make sure you catch the show, man. Cool, absolutely, yeah. If you guys are coming to Philly, TLA, I am there. I got your number. I'll let you know. We'll get some cheese. Steaks, I love it. Let's do it. Some beers. Cool. Oh, man. All right, Rick. Before I let you go, if I could just get you to cut a quick ID. You know, this is Rick yep, from no Adelita's Way. And you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Rick from Adelita's Way. You're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Cool. Rick, thanks so much. Keep up the fight, man. Thank- hey, man. Don't, don't I, am, I got a little bit of fight left in me, man. I got a two-year plan. I'm, I'm here for another album. Cool. On that hey, note, I'm going to play that. I'll play a, I Get Around off the latest EP, Deserve This. I love it. Go to iTunes and go to Adelita's Way and buy their music. Rick, have a good night, and take care, man. See you. You too. Be safe.